different technique uh, whenever you're on the defensive side as well we understand that you you bring your king into safety in uh, in the opening that's a very important thing but once you come under an attack you try to uh, look at ways fending off the attack or at least bring your king into safety and one of the important things uh, one of the important aspects is to to bring the king into safety so uh, well that can be done uh, for instance by a king walk i have um, selected a couple of examples and i would like to start with a game of myself i'm playing here with the white pieces against nikolai mickelson was a game played in a european championship under 16 in 2004 and uh, well I, I i felt like i have a nice attack here open h file for Marouk. Uh, his king king's position has already uh, been weakened and well i thought okay let's follow the the simple principle of opening up the position uh, as i took um, with my pawn on f5 as uh, well i i felt I'm, I'm doing absolutely fine here have great attacking uh, prospects but my opponent surprised me with a very interesting idea as what he did is something i absolutely didn't expect he decided to give up his main defender of, of his king by taking uh, the knight on, on d4. I thought, well, we get position with opposite colored bishops. His king side is, is weakened. What can go wrong for me? So I thought, okay, let's go rook takes d4, getting a tempo by uh, hitting the queen. He captures with check. So I step aside with my king. His queen is still under threat. And I thought, okay, the point is for me. But look what's happening here. He goes back with the queen to b5. And suddenly I started to think and I started to realize that things aren't that simple at all. Because his main defensive idea right now is bringing the king back to the center. Finding a safe place on d7 where it is being protected by its own pawns. So remarkable idea giving up your your main defender usually you're not recommended at all giving up your fianchetto bishop well uh, i wasn't sure what to to expect i i saw moves like like rook c2 uh, for black coming uh, in as well and um, well i thought that could be unpleasant if you go rook dh4 i thought okay the king is going away king f7 and well there's no way i can keep the the black king on the king side so that's why I, well, I went back with my rook to d2, but now he consolidates his position, brought the rook to c6, interesting move, and suddenly it's actually black who starts looking for tactical ideas as well, as for instance, there are ideas related to queen takes b3, rook a6, or starting with rook a6 and then taking on b3, with all sorts of mating ideas. So the opposite colored bishops may actually work in, uh, in black's favor as well. Well, after bishop to d4, the king went indeed to f7, and well, the king is absolutely fine there. Uh, the king is on his way to e6 and then to d7, and well, if I try to stop that by playing something like rook e2, well, then the pawn can actually be pushed forward, and whenever you give a check on h7, there is still a very nice uh, shelter for the king on, uh, on, on e6. So that's not gonna gonna work at all. I went bishop c3, trying to close the the c file and bring some defensive uh, help there. Um, and now, well, the reason I played this move is I wanted to set a, a small trap, and that could actually be a nice exercise for you as well. Because what happens in case of queen takes b3? Very important move. Of course, the point is that if I take, there is rook a6 with with checkmate. But I can actually play rook h7, which is a, a key move. And if the king escapes now, or at least tries to escape, I'm starting with queen e2 check. Very important check as I'm controlling the a6 square, which means that on the next move, I can actually take the, the queen and after that sacrifice my own queen on, on a6 for the rook. So, well, don't fall for the trap. Well, my opponent played it well. He went uh, for king e6. And, well, after f4, he went rook a6. Well, the, the, the attack is quite dangerous as he intends to take on b3. And so, suddenly I, I didn't see anything better than offering the exchange of queens and basically admitting that only black can, uh, can be better. So, well, this was a real eye-opener for me. Uh, very nice example that uh, you can actually try to use 
the opposite uh, colored bishops in, in your own favor as, well, white's best piece is the bishop on c3 in, uh, in, in this game. Uh, but we just run away on, on the other color, on the light squares. Yeah, so very nice convincing uh, example by, um, by my opponent. So let's go and move on to the next example. As I have uh, found uh, a game between Duda and Artemiev in the Tata Steel uh, Masters tournament in uh, 2020. And well, very nice position with isolated pawn, all minor pieces and uh, major pieces still on uh, on the board. And White is looking for an attack. And look what he is doing. He is um, going all in with uh, with a nice move, Bishop H6. And that's a sharp move as uh, you sacrifice the bishop. If you take the bishop, there are screen takes. And well, Rook G5 is coming, Knight G5 is coming, mating ideas on, on H7. Don't take that bishop but black uh, reacted very well the the main threat probably here is something like queen queen g5 or maybe bishop takes g7 uh, but black decided look i bring a defender into the game uh, knight e7 that's a good move so that you can always interfere with a knight on g6 and now knight e4 played and well things become sharp again because um White is about to remove the important defender, the knight on f6. For instance, if you take on e4, uh, well, White would simply bring another piece into the attack. And now things start to look very dangerous. It's still better not to take this bishop. And if you go knight g6, we bring the rook to h5. And suddenly the threats of bishop takes uh, g7 is uh, very difficult to meet. If you go bishop f6, there's another fantastic shot as white continues the attack with rook f4 the rook can be taken of course white is intending to take on um on, on f6 obviously but if you take on f4 there's queen takes f4 and now the threat of taking on uh, g7 taking on h7 all sorts of threats that, that look incredibly dangerous and that's leading to to mate uh, very soon likely so yeah don't get tempted taking the material but uh, Artemiev defends very well. He brings the knight to f5, attacking the bishop, but white had anticipated this and takes with the bishop on g7, opening up the king side. So, well, one of the points is that if you uh, take with a king, there is queen g5, and on the next move you, you take on f6. If you would take with a knight on uh, g7, well, then you can already uh, take... On, uh, on f6, bishop takes, queen h6, and, well, very difficult to meet the mating threat on, on h7. So, well, we can take the bishop, but, well, the defender is going to always try to uh, exchange the attacking pieces. So that's why knight takes e4 uh, had been played, rook takes e4, and now black goes for knight takes g7. Well, probably king takes is also possible, but taking with a knight offers black some additional ideas to play the move f7, f5, uh, blocking uh, the diagonal for the bishop on, on c2 and clearing the seventh rank for some of the major pieces to, to help uh, the black king. White continues. He goes queen h6 and things start to look very dangerous. For instance, if you play f6, we move the rook from e4 so that the mating threat on h7 becomes alive. Bishop takes g4, queen takes h7. King f7, and it's checkmate. So yeah, that's a that's a nice uh, idea. Well, there are all sorts of moves possible, but the uh, principled continuation is to to play f5, which is uh, in the spirit of uh, Black's last move. Knight takes g7, very consistently played. And now the attack continues. There is rook g4, fantastic play by by both sides. Really high level. Uh, calculation uh, skills are uh, displayed by, by both top grandmasters. Rook g4. Well, what, what is happening here? Of course, white is threatening checkmate. White is a piece down. And, well, he got to prove that there is sufficient compensation. Now the question is, is black able to take the rook or not? And that depends on uh, very precise uh, calculations. In the game, Artemiev didn't. Uh, like to, to take the rook or at least he didn't trust but let's see whether he could have taken um, 
the rook uh, on g4 at all. Well, probably there would follow queen takes h7, king f7, and now, well, queen g6 is likely uh, leading to, uh, to a similar uh, position. Uh, you can go back, of course, um, or you can also run away. Let's see. Bishop g6 is, is more tempting, bringing uh, another piece into the attack. And, well, things are quite dangerous. Uh, if you go uh, king f6, well, what, what is happening here? There, there is a move like, like knight to g5 uh, with a big threat of uh, knight to e4. No chance to attack the queen in the corner. There is knight e4 again. And, uh, well, after here, this, this is going to be a checkmate. So that doesn't work. So it's better to run away instantly. King e7, queen takes g7, king d6. And very likely, this is something which didn't appeal to, to black. It feels like his king is in serious uh, trouble now. And, uh, well, of course, it depends on precise calculation. The important thing is that the king is basically caught in a, in a mating net. Uh, if we imagine a, a knight reaching the e4 square, that is, uh, that's pretty bad. After knight e2, it is important that black has seen in advance uh, a key defensive idea, uh, which he didn't do in, uh, in, the, in the game. He didn't play this at all. But there is fantastic resource, queen d7. Difficult to see, but fantastic move, fighting the, for the initiative, offering the exchange of queens which would be great for uh, for black, obviously. And after knight e4, there is king uh, c7. And the king has eventually found a safe place on, uh, on the other side of the board. If you take queens, bishop takes d7, bishop takes e8, rook takes e8. Well, we get an interesting endgame where white still has a couple of pawns for the, uh, for the piece, but uh, these pawns aren't that dangerous. And, well, after exchanging rooks as well, I believe that black's uh, task is uh, not too difficult. At least uh, he can try uh, risk-free uh, to play for a win. Yeah, so very interesting uh, moment. Of course, it all depends on uh, calculation, but generally, in, in once you have a situation where uh, the opponent is investing material one of the principled reactions is to enter the line, try to exploit that material advantage, uh, but also force yourself uh, to calculate it. If you refrain from the calculations, well, then the big problem is that you don't, there is a chance that you don't get the, the, the most out of it. So, um, well, in the game there, there followed bishop f6 instead. And now after knight g5, white threatens mate, bishop takes g5, rook takes g5. And, well, it's still a still a sharp game, but, um, well, and anything is possible. White is uh, still exerting this pressure, um, although, objectively speaking, black should be absolutely fine in case of rook f7 uh, holding the, the seventh rank. Well, for instance, there, there is an interesting line, uh, g4, king h8. Uh, getting out of, of the pin on the g-file, but now after gf5, knight takes f5, bishop takes f5, bishop takes, rook takes f5. Of course, we cannot take with a rook on f5 because of queen g7 mate, but there is queen takes, rook takes, and rook takes. We get a position with two rooks versus the queen. The king is safe. The rooks can, can be connected. White pawns aren't that impressive at all, so it should be quite comfortable for black. Well, in the game, uh, black didn't go for this option, but it looks like convincing line four for black. In any case, um, well, the principled line was in this case to capture material, go for it, and uh, don't be afraid to to go all over the board with your with your king. It is a weapon. It is dangerous, but in the end, you you get rewarded. Well, let me show you one also one other famous example game between uh, Gashimov and uh, Grishuk played in 2010 in the World Team Championships. Sharp position from, from a Sicilian where black is uh, currently a, a piece up, but obviously a lot of pieces are, are hanging and um, his king is in the, in the center. But look what's happening in this game. Black doesn't want to take on, on d1 in this position because after bishop takes b4 uh, with the idea to, to play queen f7, 
things starting to look quite dangerous for, for Black. Might still be playable, but the move played by Grishuk is very understandable. As he would like to bring his king into safety, anticipating the check on f7, he goes queen d5. And now after rook f7, he goes away with his king to c6. Rook c1. Interesting move, as after exchanging the queens on, on h5, uh, white will regain the piece, he will be two pawns down, but he's very active and as black's pieces are still stuck on the back rank. Another interesting point is that if you would take the bishop on d3, which threatens mate, then white has an amazing resource with queen e5, covering the mating threat and attacking the knight on c3, which is dangerous because you're, you, you could even lose your queen if you're not careful. And also, well, there's this check on, on c7. But, well, Black had all seen this. He decides to get out of the, of the pin on the c file, goes king to b6, very nice move. One of the ideas is that if you take the knight now, black will take the, the bishop on d3, the checks have been covered, and if you take on b4, there is queen e4 check, after which you can capture the bishop on b4, guarding the important c5 uh, mating threat. So, yeah, no chance for white capturing uh, that, that knight. He goes bishop e3, keeps the, the, uh, the pieces on the board, but look what's happening. Black needs to go all over uh, with his king to a5, which looks incredibly dangerous. Uh, well, of course, if the queens are getting exchanged, that would be an achievement for, for black. So white goes a3, tricky move, uh, with the idea to deflect the, the bishop from the knight. But, well, if you take on h5, there is an intermediate check taking on b4, and after king takes b4, g takes h5, well, you are a couple of uh, pawns down here, but look at the black king, and there are all sorts of threats, like bishop d2, uh, very dangerous still for the black king, this, despite having uh, exchanged these, uh, these queens. But, fantastic move, played by, um, by Grishuk, can you find a move here for black? Don't get tempted to trade queens yet. He goes for the move king a4. Fantastic idea. Um, so the point is now, uh, well, there are a couple of moves here, um, but you get out of the fifth rank. There are no any uh, any tricks with the taking on b4 with check. And now after a takes b4, which was played in the game, queen takes d3, it is actually black who is threatening mate uh, on, on e2. Queen a5 check. King b3, and now fantastic situation where the black king is hiding in the white's camp, being entirely safe, basically because of the, the knight on c3, which is a fantastic defender, taking away so many squares from the rook, from the queen. That's exactly what you need. But at the same time, the knight is a very important attacking piece as well. Um, very difficult to meet the threat of queen e2. Uh, on top of that, there is also queen takes e3 with, with check. So this is actually game over. White had to uh, take on c3 uh, with the rook. Rook takes c3, bishop to d2. Still, it's not over yet, because if you just carelessly move the queen, let's say queen d3, apparently there is something like b5 uh, clearing uh, the, the b4 square for the queen. So the, the cooperation between... Um, between the queen and bishop is uh, is working uh, again. So yeah, after b6, very uh, sorry, after bishop d2, it is very important that uh, the move b6 is is played, deflecting uh, the white queen. Uh, one of the points is that if you take this pawn, we're gonna play queen e5, uh, check, and after king d1, black is a full rook up, but your king is still in danger. There are still sorts of Ideas like rook f3, trying to mate uh, the, the black king. But fantastic uh, shot here by Grishuk. Uh, he understands that once you're material up, you have the possibilities of giving back some uh, part of that advantage. He plays bishop b7, excellent move, covering the f3 square. There are no good checks, and he connects the rooks. So after queen takes b7, rook h to d8 which uh, is very important as the rook uh, starts joining the attack as well. Look what's happening. Rook f3 check, king a2, 
Rook F2, hoping for some sort of discovery anytime soon. Keep in mind that it's only an exchange, but look what's happening. The king is going to B1. Incredible resource as uh, the king is absolutely safe. Once again, there are no checks. Uh, the pawn on B4 perfectly functions as a, as a shelter for the king. And the king is actually a nice attacking weapon as well. The game finished like queen f3, well, hoping for queen b3 check, but look, rook a c8, black is actually threatening checkmate thanks to the help of the king. King to a queen b3 check, queen b2, everything is covered, and well, after the exchange of queens, it was time to resign. Um, well, rook c2 is, is coming on the, on the next move after uh, black can even consider liquidating <coughs> into... Uh, into queen, uh, king and pawn end game uh, with an extra pawn is completely hopeless for white. Incredible resource. I'm not going to tell you now that you should always move your king all over the place, but my main message from this uh, lesson is to don't be afraid. Go into the calculations and, uh, well, try to make sure that your king is always safe wherever it is, whether it's castled or at the other side of the board, like in, uh, in Grishuk's game.